there! Happy Thursday! Thanks so much for joining me here tonight uh, for Night of Craft Night with Friends. So, you guys, we are working on our swan embroidery. We are turning it into a zipper pouch with a curved top here. Uh, we are hand quilting it. We have the front done. Here's the shape for it. And we have been working on hand quilting the back. So I'm thinking we'll get done with that tonight. And I'm hoping to cut that out with the lining tonight. So by tomorrow, we should have all of our pieces ready to go to actually turn this into a bag. And if we can get it done tomorrow, that would be icing on the cake. So that is the plan. So, all right, you guys, let's get going. Okay. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining me here. All right. So here's where we left off last night. Uh, we decided to put another decorative edge in there, so we actually have two little hand-stitched bits in there. I'm going to get you guys down lower here. That is what we're going to focus on tonight as well. So we have drawn in our extra little scallop. I think it adds such a prettiness to it. Uh, our scallops were pretty tall. So by adding in that extra one there, I think we've kind of made it look like we've got an actual kind of more traditional size scallop here. So I think it's looking awesome. Uh, we'll get those three in and then we got these little baby bottom ones and uh, then we'll be done with that. And then I do have some choices of lining here. Uh, and uh, I think I already have my choice made. <laughs> I think I'm gonna go with these cute little foxes. I think they go really well with the swan and this orange is kind of the same color orange as this. Um, that was the fourth one I pulled. These are some of the other ones, other choices. Uh, the pink one I thought was kind of cute too, like the pink, but then I saw the foxes and I'm like, okay, it's just gotta be the foxes. Uh, especially since we saw that fox in our backyard the other day. So foxes are on the brain. So this guy popped out at me. I think this is going to be the perfect pairing for it. So I'm actually really excited about that. I was going to, I was going to choose here with you guys, but this one's just calling out. So I made the decision <laughs> uh, by myself here. So, all right. So that'll be our lining. Ah, that's going to be such a pretty pop of color. So imagine that you You've, you've unzipped this and then you have all these cute little foxes. So these foxes are directional, uh, which means um, it's either a directional pattern or a tossed pattern. And a directional pattern is uh, like it only is upright in one position. Like if I turn it this way or this way, you know, it's, it's wrong. They're upside down at this point versus a tossed pattern. So here's a... a an example of a tossed pattern. No matter what way we turn this, these little guys are all gonna be kind of every which way. So this is a version of a tossed pattern. This is a directional pattern. So we are gonna have to pay attention to that in this case, because when I open it up, I kind of want them upright, right? I don't want them like upside down or sideways. So when we cut our fabric, I just have to be thinking about that. But you know, we only are cutting two pieces. I don't think it's gonna be a problem at all, but Always a mental note that I make when using directional fabric uh, that like, oh, I got to actually pay attention here. So that's later. Let's start with our stitching for the night. I'm really, really liking how this is uh, turning out here. Uh, Sylvia says that fox is adorable. Oh, Kimberly likes the little fox. Yeah, I, I, you know, was going through my bin of um, fat quarter fabric and uh, Saw some cute ones, but then saw that fox. And I'm like, okay, this is the one right here. All right, I think I got like a four arms length thread here. Eh, just beyond. <laughs> uh, we we're trying to get that four arm length. I do like that idea. So the idea behind, uh, I think it was Gretchen's grandmother or aunt or someone oh Gretchen you're here um someone in your family saying always just have a forearm length of thread and we got talking about that and it makes sense because we're just doing a little running stitch really right this is just a little in and out stitch on all these so if we would accidentally accidentally like cut one of those 
you know, I don't know how that would happen, but, you know, on a quilt or something, one wears away, it's all going to come apart uh, if that happens. So if you have a really long thread, like, you know, a meter or a yard or whatever of thread. Oh, Grandma Lund said it, <laughs> Gretchen says. Uh, but if you have a long piece of thread, then uh, the whole thing is going to come apart for that length of thread. So if we're only doing little forearm length bits, then if something happens, we're gonna be okay. Oops, I can feel this on the other side. I gotta do this over. I made an actual stitch on the other side so I didn't go just through the batting. I had my left hand back there and could feel, feel the thread running by, so that's, that's not right. I'm just going to that starting point and I just wanna be in between the fabrics. There we go. Okay, let's pop that knot through. There we go. It's a fun little popping noise. All right, get the jewelry on. Just makes me feel special every time I put this uh, thimble lady thimble on. Maybe because they're expensive. They are very expensive thimbles, but I do, I do like it. And um, I think maybe the price tag is making me feel like it's extra special when I use it. That could be, that could very likely be. I think that was last year's birthday present to myself. <laughs> um, I did not design the fox fabric. I'm gonna look up who did though. It looks super familiar. Um, if I'm lucky, this is the piece that, oh no, uh, one of the salvages, so the salvage is the side of the fabric, so one side will have these dots, they'll actually both have the dots in, that's where the fabric, the machine pulls the fabric, but sometimes when you cut it, one side will have the writing on and one doesn't, so this one doesn't have it on, so I don't know, let me know if any of you recognize this fabric, I'm betting you, betting you it's at least a seven-year-old, um, collection so it's it's not new it's not fresh but um if you if you're familiar with it let me know let me know um if you can tell the designer of it i i don't remember i might know if you say it <laughs> but unfortunately uh yeah it doesn't have it written on the selvage on mine which is a bummer i i do like getting the piece of the selvage that has the information on be nice if they just printed it on both sides that then every fat quarter would be sure to have that information Ooh, that felt good already i'm not even 20 minutes in there look at those stitches 20 minutes is my things start running smoothly time <laughs> for this uh hand stitching i feel like i may have spoken too soon so we'll see eh, still feeling good I'm really happy um, we went with these the second scallop I think it's super pretty I could see doing this on a larger piece and I am pretty surprised we talked about this last night but pretty surprised at how quick this is actually going which makes me think that a large project wouldn't be like the end of the world like it actually get done at some point <laughs> that's always the fear uh, but I'm definitely going to finish my other quilts before even entertaining the idea of doing a large like whole cloth hand quilted quilt definitely finishing all my other quilts before then but we're finishing off these little projects so that's a start that makes me feel good i think we talked about that last night we have i for as far as small kind of unfinished projects i just have this one um i have the apron 
and, and we just that's practically done so the apron that we're stitching the herbs to we have one more herb I think the mint to stitch onto that apron and then we're, we're gonna maybe add a name or something on it or maybe I'll add my initials to it because there's that one little area that it feels like it needs something oh check them stitches out that's those are goodies right there Ooh, see I'm feeling good on this tonight so I just need let's see it's Thursday I need four days of practice and then or three days of practice and then on the fourth day everything runs smoothly <laughs> that's good to know I suppose it's good knowledge to have but yeah so I have the apron this the apron and that mandala tea towel and that's it like I finished I finished the sheep pillow that was a long-term project that finally got done with and then just like yeah all these little little projects hanging out I do have tons of other embroideries that we could do something with but as far as started and unfinished projects we're down to just the big ones the quilts and I'm ready for all those to get done I want I want like a clean slate which is you know is that a real thing I'm not I'm not sure about that but that'd be nice a fresh palette of projects and that might be a fantasy <laughs> Amy says hello penguin and fishy penguiny and fishy peoples Oh, so Lenora says, saw someone quilting using her thumb to push the needle and going from bottom to top. Oh, so like, like this way, like going like this. Oh, that's interesting. Did she have a thimble on her thumb then? Um, I don't know if Noeline's here, but I think she has a thimble for her thumb and her. Oh, Gretchen says she uses her thumb. So... I know the thimble lady does make thumb thimbles as well. I'm just trying to imagine what that would feel like. I suppose it'd be easier to push. Hmm. I am kind of liking this going towards me because I can kind of see, I can see the line. I don't know, yeah, I'm, I'm digging the towards me. I was going side to side, but someone mentioned going towards them and, and that's been really working well for me I think <laughs> Kimberly says I have so many different hobbies that I'm not sure I could ever finish them all that's how I feel too so that's why I'm like oh dang I only have like these couple little projects left let's just let's just see if I can finish them all and then I mean make real decisions on what I want to do next that'd be cool I just feel like I've just been starting things. Oh, you know what? I think I'm going to have enough for... I didn't think I grabbed enough, but I think I'm going to have enough thread for all of these loops here. I think i got to do one more stitch here to get to the top. There we are. Ugh. This is fun. I'm, I'm actually going to kind of be sad when we're done with all this hand stitching. Which is maybe reason enough to start another one. Okay, so I just had an idea. <laughs> this is a problem. But I've been um, in my head. So I have so much scrap fabric, right? Uh, because, you know, from our cutoffs of the embroidery kit, sometimes, you know, a, there'll be like a, some little blemish on some of our fabrics that we don't want those in our kits. And I just have like oodles of white and uh, kind of an un unbleached fabric just bins of them I, I've been kind of wanting to just sew them together like and make make just like these white or creamy quilts out of them so it'd be fun to maybe sew it all together so it'd be like a patchwork but it'd be hard to even tell like unless you're up close because it'd be all the same color or like creams and white just patchwork like an improv piece um quilt 
it'd be fun to do that first and then do like some hand stitching like this all over it. That would be kind of cool. It'd be cool to do like like in a red thread or something instead of a blending thread. That would be kind of cool. Anyway, maybe that's maybe that's a project once all these other quilts are done. No, I think I would just improv piece. I think I would just sew random shapes together until it was big enough. <laughs> I suppose I could cut them up into like nice little squares. I think that would look nice too. But I just really like the improv piecing. So maybe like, so it would look like a whole cloth quilt because it would all be one color. Um, but it wouldn't be, it'd be like all over the place. So I don't know, that'd be kind of a neat, like modern and traditional thing together, I think, which I like. All right, last stitch. And man, I'm able to chit chat and do all sorts of stuff while I'm doing it tonight. Okay, then I, three days is the day. Three days of work and then Day four, it goes smoothly for hand stitching. Oh, thanks, Sharon. Sharon's saying it's coming along nicely. I'm really happy with how it's going tonight. Actually, we might we might actually get done early tonight because this is going a little faster than I thought. Um, all we're going to have to do yet is this bottom row here. And then I want to cut this uh, and the lining at the same time. Uh, I don't have the sewing machine out, so we would probably do all that tomorrow, but we could start maybe going over what needs to get done and uh, figuring that out so we have a plan for tomorrow. But um, I only have enough stuff here. I don't have the sewing machine set up, so won't be sewing yet, but I, I do want to get on that. Uh, next week, we have a couple days of June still before it switches over to July, so it's kind of like another free week. Oh, it's looking pretty. Um, so I think I'd like to just continue on with this project. If we're not done tomorrow, I'd love to magically be done with this tomorrow. That'd be super cool. Ooh, I'm going to put this in here. I don't think we're going to need it anymore. That's sad. Um... But yeah, we'll, we'll sew this up tomorrow. Gosh, I hope that wouldn't take the whole time. Or I mean more than one time to just to do a little simple zipper pouch. The trick is this, this arc. Um, you know, we have this arc going here and I haven't done that with, um, haven't done that with the, uh, with a zipper pouch before, so I'll have to look up how to do that. Sylvia says, so no UFO blocks are going into into one quilt. Oh, that'd be a fun thing to do too. So that'd be a fun thing. That'd be a fun just topic. So uh, what, are the, what do they call those when you have blocks that were meant for a different quilt but didn't um, ever make it to the quilt? Not like phantom blocks, but like Oh, what's the word for that? Like blocks that just didn't make it all the way in to a quilt. I don't know. There's a term. Uh, maybe someone here knows and can, can spit it out. But uh, I do have a few random blocks. That would be, those would be fun to address. Like what to do with these extra orphan blocks. That's it, Linda and Sally. Oh, and Debbie. Okay, good. You guys got it. Orphan blocks. That's, that's what they're called. Yeah, it, it would be fun. Oh, that would be fun. Like what to do with orphan blocks. I'm gonna, I, I know where they are too. Um, oh, we did rearrange a little bit. So all my craft stuff is kind of, I kind of don't quite know where everything is now, but I do have them together, the orphan blocks, um, in a certain bag. So if I can find that bag, then then we're good. 
Ooh, but that would be fun. Oh man, now that's another unfinished project too, isn't it? Orphan blocks sitting around. So, yeah, those would be fun to, to break out. I kind of think that would be fun as a, as a bag. I don't know, does everything have to end up as bags? All my stuff is bags. But orphan blocks sound like perfect for like tote bags. That's where my brain went right away. Is like, ooh, we could make just like the cutest tote bags ever with some orphan blocks. Um, my particular orphan blocks are from the um, Serengeti Beasties fabric collection that I did back back when, and that that's um, those really dark blues and bright oranges and stuff. I think that would be a really fun project. Potential for a project. I don't know what the project would be yet. They'd actually be pretty cute in just a quilt together too. So maybe that's... I'll have to find them. We'll break them out. That could turn into a project for sure. <laughs> Sharon says, I have a lot of orphan blocks to more each day. LOL. Yeah. <laughs> I have a lot of orphan kind of improv piece chunks that could be something too but for like true blocks I, I do a few ooh Lynn says orphan blocks in your quilt coat oh that's a good idea so there okay so I suppose you could consider that an unfinished project because that's a that's a project I've purchased a pattern for Oh, speaking of, I suppose our leader and ender project is unfinished too. Ugh, all those quilty things are unfinished. Ooh, I forgot about the quilt coat, which is dumb because it's right behind me. It's on my brain. But in the past couple days, I haven't thought about it. Oh, I would love to get that done. So I didn't end up measuring. I have that pattern behind me. I'll go. Gr I'll grab it after my next pull here uh, but I have not measured how big of pieces I need for that yet um, so here's here's that pattern so kind of <laughs> it looks crazy here but they actually are so cool and I've I've um well and they're in style and stuff now too I I mentioned that uh, artist uh, Psychic Outlaw. So if you look up Psychic Outlaw, they'll come up on Instagram. You can just Google it too, and you'll get you'll get her. But she makes these quilted coats. I suspect it might even be this pattern. I don't know for sure. She did mention that she uses a vintage pattern um, for them, but they are pieces of art. She takes these vintage quilts uh, or antique quilts or just whatever quilt someone might have. And she turns them into these chore coats, she calls them. She turns them into lots of other things, too. But, like, I think the chore coat is her kind of, you know, main main showcase piece or whatever. And uh, she does stuff with bandanas and stuff, too. But I, I like the quilt stuff. Uh, so... Uh, someone, I think, mentioned here that the leader in Ender quilt that I'm working on would be great for that and I love that idea and then uh, then I don't even have to make the leader and ender quilt into a quilt I can just make it into quilted pieces that are big enough for for this coat and uh ooh, it'd be awesome if I could get that done by fall then I'd have like a fall like just throw on to do yard work coat ugh that'd be cool uh but yeah, so I, I wouldn't need to make a whole quilt or use up a quilt. I could just make pieces big enough for the coat. So I, I was going to measure like what size pieces I needed, and I, I didn't do that. So that that's, I guess, step two after buying the pattern. Um, step two of the project. I'll have to, I'll have to start a uh, project tracker. For, for that project so I can write down what I might still need yet or what the next steps are and then just have it with it so I can start getting getting that done. But yeah, that's... 
see projects are starting without me even really think about it so I suppose I'm never gonna have that clean slate but it would be nice to have like these old projects that have been sitting around for ages out of the way I mean quilts are always kind of like that but like this bag I've had forever this the swan thing that we're doing now and that mandala um, mandala tea towel I think what's really what it really is is that this project the tea towel mandala tea towel project and the sheep knitting project that I, I did finish that one because of all the finish it Fridays uh, but those three projects are in the same bag that I have and uh, they've been sitting there forever it sits in my living room as just like a hey you could pick this up at any time and, and work on them in this really pretty bag I, I really like it this it's just this kind of neat big leather tote bag I just think it's the prettiest thing so I've, I've had these projects in it and this is kind of like or the mandala is the last started project sitting in there so then it's like everything in that bag would be done and I can put a new thing in there maybe that's what's irking me I just want to get all those projects that were in that bag done <laughs> Robbie Lynn says I haven't had a clean slate in 30 years probably yeah uh, I, don't, I don't think I have either <laughs> but I do feel like we are kind of getting some of these lingering things done so I am getting that feeling a little bit and with the quilts I mean we'll get on that again with the granny square quilt not next week but the week after those are on their way to being done too I do want to finish that orophil quilt we're working on the back of that I think if I remember right all the quilts are either ready to be quilted or they're on I'm working on the back so we're getting there I'm gonna have to have like a, a Saturday or something where we do like a marathon I haven't done one of those in a while but where we start quilting one of these quilts I think I think all the quilts are gonna take work though before I quilt them so I have the I love home quilt that I wanted to do some decorative borders but I wanted to do some research on decorative borders so it's the research phase that's keeping me held up from quilting that and for the triangle tango quilt I wanted to draw like a, a scene and then uh, try and transfer that scene onto the quilt and then use that to quilt so that was an idea I'm trying it's just like all these ideas that I want to test and so I haven't drawn anything for the back of that and that's that's why those two are lingering but it's time to push through that, I think. All right, this is my last stitch of this guy. Ugh. I'm kind of sad. I really enjoyed that. Now I want to add 80, 100 other things into here just to keep stitching, but I think it's nice just, just as is. That's some pretty stitching. Let's peek at the back. Um, I'm peeking at the back just because it doesn't have the blue lines on it, and ugh. I really like it um, I don't think we're gonna get rid of the blue lines probably till this whole thing's done because uh, I got them on the the front too I'll probably just I don't know sew it all up with them in and I don't know spritz it all down when I'm done I suppose hope it doesn't bleed too much or whatever Okay, well, I guess we can move on now. Let's uh, get back to uh, the lining. So I think I'm gonna try and cut. I'm gonna try and cut this and the lining all at once. So I'm gonna take this out. I don't need. Oh, geez, these are always a little difficult to pull out. Oh, there, that's just coming out. Um, these are those Q snaps. I can take that apart. Ugh. Just trying to pull them off, but they're they're always a little bit of a trick. Ugh, there we go. Annoying. I like Q snaps, but dang, it's just that last part. But there, good, we were able to slide it out. Okay, 
So you can store them with the guys on. I think I'm gonna just get them all the same. All right. So these are in that little project bag, and now I don't need them to be in there anymore. I think I'm gonna have to make a little container for this. I think make a little little pouch for this. Maybe could do that this week potentially. We'll just set them to the side for now. Ooh, and I have, uh, just as a reminder, uh, June's embroidery of the month is the little hummingbird. Uh, so there's just the rest of this week. So just like a few more days left. So the rest of this week and uh, when does it turn to be July? Is that Thursday or Wednesday next week? One of those two. So uh, June, end of June is when that goes away. Uh, all right. So I'm ready to cut this out, but I, I want to cut the lining at the same time, I figured. So let's give this a press. Ooh. I'm not sure this is big enough. Let's, let's fold this in half and see. Oh, it's totally totally big enough. Wow, look how pretty these two are going to be together. This this is just the right project for this. I love when that comes together. Um, that is such a pinky bright orange. It is a pretty, pretty color. And it goes just perfectly with this orange of the beak there. Uh, that's going to be just really fun opening up this bag to that color. So good. I'm happy it's large enough. So this is what I, my plan is. I'm going to fold it in half just like what we have here because then when we cut it out, I'm actually going to fold it in half. I'm going to press it first, but I'm going to fold it in half this way. Um, it doesn't really matter, but then I'm going to cut it out. And uh, then when we open it, then you'd see the lining on the inside. So that's kind of how this would be. Uh, the first step is going to be sewing these zippers on. Uh, that'll be tomorrow. But I think I might do a hair research on sewing zippers on on a curve. I suspect it's going to be um, the same as doing it any other way, just with a lot more pins and clips. Uh, which is not going to be fun, but we'll we'll give it a try. But doesn't hurt to do a uh, hair research first, I guess. That's tomorrow's job. All right, let's get this guy looking a little flatter. What a pretty fabric. Did anyone? I don't know if anyone figured out what this fabric was or not. I don't, don't remember. I don't have it written on the side here. What is the fingertip that you're using on your pointer finger? Oh, so this is, um, so these are both, both of these are from um, the Thimble Lady, but I think you can get these kind of other places. It's a silicone thimble. So, I would never push a needle through with this because a needle would go right through. So I'm sure that's not the purpose. Actually, they might be for like, for like, you know, letters and papers and stuff, potentially, you know, it might not even be originally for the sewing industry, but it's a silicone thimble. Um, I've been using it just to help me pull the needle through and it really has helped a lot. I did a test without anything to pull the needle through. And then I did a test with just my thumb and then both the thumb and the pointer finger and then just the pointer finger that that felt the best for me so it's it's a, a silicone thimble all right i don't really need to press all the way up there because i'm not gonna i'm not gonna be cutting up there all right, I think I'm going to set my mat down here just so I don't scratch my table, I suppose. All right, I'm going to fold it. I just have left the selvage here. 
All right, let's see how this goes. We're just kind of winging it again. So I'm setting this on, but I want to make sure that that we are actually on the fabric straight. Not really that straight. Let's let's actually use the ruler to help us out. That's looking pretty decent. Yeah, I think we got it. Now this shape of this is a little skewed. I suspect it's moved a little since I've um, quilted it, but we're just having it be 80% good on this for sure. I think we're fine. All right, so I think I'm gonna go all around to the top and then I'll be able to get rid of the bulk of this fabric and then um, we'll get these bottom edges. So let's just kind of snip up, make sure I'm going through all the layers of fabric. The scissors can definitely take it. This is like one of my top five tools is this particular scissors. It's those Kai, Kai shears, that 7,000 series or something. I'm gonna make a list really soon here. I think I'm gonna put it together maybe for next month of all of these favorite things and stuff because man like this scissors is awesome and that cordless iron i got a list of super duper favorite things but i thought i'd also put in the things that i love using for um different uses so like embroidery my favorite embroidery things and then i'd put like the hand quilting things that I like, the like this thimble and all that, just so I have like a, just a nice resource where we can find everything. I guess that's something I've been wanting to do for a while, but I think it's time. All right, I'm going to just ugh, give that a little twist. That was probably not the smartest thing. Let's see. Yeah, everything's in position still. All right, I'm gonna cut the bottom edge and then we'll get those little squares, square corners, and then we'll be good to go. We'll have, have this chunk ready. Okay. Snip. Looks good enough. All oh, this is gonna be definitely good enough. Uh, with this fabric, or the batting and, and all that with how thick this is. There's gonna be like leeway to get this right, I think too. All right, lots of good scraps left over. I'll have to go through those in a bit. Oh, it just looks so much more finished when it's in its shape. So there's our front and our back. We'll have to peek at what those look like together. And our insides, let's just, let's just see what this whole thing might feel like. All right, so that would be the lining piece there. This is not how we're really assembling them. I just wanted to kind of peek. All right, so that'd be the front. We got the pretty back. And then when we unzip it, we'd have all these little foxes on the inside. Ugh, that is gonna be just the brightest, prettiest thing. And because the zipper is gonna be on a curve, I think we're gonna be able to see more of those foxes. Like we'll be able to kind of flop it open like this, I think if the zipper is all the way, all the way open. Cool, all right, so let's just peek at that zipper. I suppose we could take it out of the packaging. I've had this for probably 10 years just sitting in my bin of stuff. So it all gets used eventually, all the craft stuff everywhere, it gets used eventually. I mean, same with this fabric, I've had that for ages. Okay. Let's just tear this plastic. I can't reach it. This is from a Japanese uh, company. This zipper. There we go. Sheesh. Let's see. Does it say on here? Eh, no. Ooh, that's. 
that's nice. They don't staple it in there like some U.S. companies do. They just staple it on in there. This is much softer than I thought it was going to be, too, which is great. That'll make it, hopefully, easier to work with. So, theoretically, this is long enough. Let's just double check. Yeah, it's, it's just long enough, so this is just the right scissors or um, zipper for this. Wow, yeah, so the next part, we are going to be... We're going to like be putting the zipper in here on a curve and like pinning that down. And then we're going to try and get this guy on top of it at the same time. And we need to like sew all of these edges together all at once on a curve. That's what's going to be tricky. So I, I suspect it is going to be a pile of pinning. Ugh, we're gonna be like kind of sewing at a little angle and stuff too. I don't actually have a zipper, a zipper um, foot for my sewing machine. So a zipper foot allows you, it's just a skinny foot, which allows you to get right up against the zipper. So you have like none of this tape, the, the like fabric part of it, it just goes right up to the zipper. I'm realizing this is an invisible zipper too. I didn't really realize that before. That's kind of fun. This is meant for like a really cute dress or something. Uh, <laughs> it's gonna be on here. Uh, but because I don't have a zipper foot, um, more of this band is going to be exposed, which is perfect. I want as much of this band exposed as possible just because it is so freaking cute with these spots on it. Um, oh yeah, I'll be using clips. I'll be using all the wonder clips. So we'll be getting we're getting these puppies out. I'll be using a thousand of these, I'm thinking. Um, gosh, I'm almost wondering if I sew it to one fabric and then stick the other one and sew it onto that, but that just sounds like more work, maybe. But yeah, so theoretically, the process would be putting right sides together of the zipper. So this would ultimately flip around and be like, like so. So we'd, ooh, this is gonna be bulky too because it's all this fabric. This will be a challenge, that's for sure. But we'll sew these three fellers together first. And then we'll be able to flip this whole thing right side out. So now the lining will be on the inside. We'll do a top stitch on it. And then we'll have to do the same thing to the opposite, opposite side. And it's just going to be super awkward because of the curve. We'll have to do a super simple... Um, zipper pouch one of these days just a rectangle they're so easy um, you can like you can get a whole system of a pile of them going um, all at once but yeah this curve is going to throw me a little bit I think we'll have to mark where the end of the zipper like where the zipper should stop and I think this zipper is long enough that I'm not going to make any ends to it I think I'm going to just let it be the zipper itself Ooh, we are going to have all sorts of challenges. Uh, Tracy says, I wonder if cutting little slits on the curve part would help. Ooh, yeah, we'll have to, we'll have to think about that. Um, I'm going to definitely... Oh, Marie says, just go slow. Yeah, I'm thinking that's probably the jam. Uh, Lenore says, baste it first. Oh, and then restitch with a final length of stitch size. Yeah, we could... Yeah, we could go further to the outside first. Oh, Gina says find the center of the zipper and the center of the bag. Oh, see, now that's smart. Okay, we're going to do that. We'll find the center of the zipper and then we'll fold the center of the bag. Yeah, that'll be our first clip on everything. That's a really good point. And then maybe we'll just go until I run out of zipper. Like, just have the zipper be the length that it's going to be. Yeah, I like that idea. Let's just let's just go the arc until I'm done with the zipper. So we'll we'll close it like right before this plastic guy. So like right here to just after just after these zipper guys here too. So 
All right, I'm liking it. We're coming up with a plan here. Once the zipper is on, how about seeing both lining, then front and back? The lining would be loose. We will top stitch. So Linda, the top stitching is what's going to hold it together ultimately. So that first, the sewing of the three things, we'll just attach it and then we'll press it and then we will top stitch it and that's what's gonna hold it down really, really tightly. So we'll do that and then we'll do the um, other side as well. I could glue baste. I don't know if glue basting would make this strong. Like, I, I don't know if that would be strong enough. I think I'm gonna have to clip this thing. Just clip a lot. Wash away tape. I don't have any of that, but I know what you're talking about. That would have been, that'd be a good idea, Grace. Okay, Noeline says yes, based first. Yeah, I think, I think we'll clip. We'll clip everything. Uh, we'll mark the centers. I do like that idea. And then we'll clip the heck out of it. And then we're just going to have to see how it feels. Like, if it feels like we can do it, then we'll just do it. Um, if it feels like, oh my god, we're going to have to base this. I did see on TikTok <laughs> a bag maker who used larger seams than a quarter inch, but she used a stapler to staple the seams, and then she sewed it, and then she just cut all the staples off because the seam allowance was big enough. That'd be cool. Oh yeah, I could hand baste it. You're right, um, Robbie Lynn. That's a good idea. Yep, we're gonna, we'll have to just see tomorrow, but all our pieces are here. Um, I'll get the sewing machine set up and we should be just ready to rock tomorrow. I'm, I'm really excited. I love our combinations of everything here. All right, and I think that'll be that for the night. All right, so very happy with how this turned out. Uh, that background is gonna be so pretty. And I just, this fox pattern is just the sweetest. Uh, here's that that back. This is actually the back stitches. I think we need to turn it this way There we go. That's what the blue lines. We'll get rid of those blue lines yet. But yeah, I think this will be fun uh, This will be uh, my first time doing a curved zipper like this We should have just made it simple, but I think it'll be it'll be fun. It'll be pretty when it's done <laughs> All right, everyone. So that'll be tomorrow the sewing of this zipper pouch and we'll be making the little, little box pleats too. Hopefully we can get done. Um, I suspect that this actual zipper part is gonna take a while, but we might just stay and finish it because the rest of it shouldn't take very long. So, all right, you guys, I'm excited. Uh, go check out Penguin and Fish for that embroidery of the month if you haven't gotten that yet. And uh, the swan pattern is also available there as a PDF and a kit. And uh, I'm ready. Let's get this going tomorrow. So great. Uh, awesome. So have a wonderful evening, everyone. And I will see you tomorrow on Friday at 8.30 p.m. here. Have a great evening. Good night.